Okay, in this segment, we're going to be uh, looking at the weekly assignments, balance scorecard weekly assignments. <clears throat> and the purpose of doing these assignments each week is so that you, you know, it doesn't all just snowball on you the last week, you have to have this big project in. And the, also, the beauty of it is that you have a chance to get feedback from your professor each week. So you don't have to feel like you're an expert and you won't be when you get started with this. But each week you should l learn a little bit more and do another piece so that at the end, in week 12, you should have most of your pieces and parts together. And there's no reason that you can't do well on this project if you pay attention to the feedback that you get on your weekly uh, assignments. <clears throat> in session seven, when we really start the managerial uh, accounting uh, portion of this class, uh, you're to prepare an outline on the background or history of your organization. And there's actually some directions in your um, balance scorecard project that cover these weekly assignments. Um, some things that you should definitely do in this section is you should make mention of the unit within the organization that you are employed and then give an overview of the main customer segments and the size of the organization and the history. Now, what I have had people do sometimes is just, per, just go on with endless detail about the history because some companies really have a very rich history. I mean, I've actually had people that have done eight pages or more just about the history of their company and who bought it and what, you know, how many different hands it passed through, you know, and especially if it's old and there's been a lot of changes. <clears throat> However, that is not necessary for the project. Um, one to one and a half pages should be sufficient, but if you feel that you can't get it in in that length of uh, the page, you can make it longer if you need to. And you notice I set up here to prepare an outline. Because in week, in week, in session seven, you're coming into this, and I, I haven't even explained the project, we haven't even studied the balance scorecard, but I know that everybody knows a little bit about the history of the organization that they're with. And if you don't, some people have told me that um, it really helped them to learn more about the background and history of their organization. So it should all be a win-win. This is not a research project per se, as far as having to have a lot of references. But if you do get your information from any company literature or website, then you should be, in, in, when you turn in your final project, you should have a reference in the end on you know, where you got your information. Um, the only people that really exceptions to that have been people that have had their own businesses. Occasionally I've had people that have had their own businesses, and so they knew all the information about the history in their head, and they were the source, and they didn't need to have a source. I've also had people that have had more than one job and they may have decided their, their part-time job was what they wanted to use for their balanced scorecard project rather than their full-time job. I also had someone that was starting a business and thought it, they really would like to apply um, some of these concepts to the business they were starting and that would be, would be more beneficial to them. So again, that's up to you, but the first week um, if you prepare an outline based on your full-time job and you decide you want to do it based on your part-time job, you just need to let me know. Um, an outline is okay at this point, but if you're, if you're like me, I don't really like to write outlines. I'd rather just write it out in paragraph form. That's the way it needs to be for your final report. Um, so this one and one and a half pages, I'm really talking about the final report. You know, in the first week, if you just have time to throw together an outline, that's fine. Just be aware that in the end you will have to um, have it a, uh, not more than just an outline. Now I also want and really stress this that these weekly turn-ins are so important that I have um, I'm assigning 10 percent of your total grade on the project to each one of these weekly turn-ins. So we have a weekly turn-in in session 7, so session 8, session 9, session 10, and session 11. Now, it doesn't take, you don't have to be really good at accounting to figure out that 10% times five is 50% of the project. So 50% of your grade you can get in these first, um, in weeks seven through 11. It should not be difficult to get these points because as long as you've tried to follow the directions, I'm gonna give you credit for it. It's just a weekly turn in. It's not anything that you know, you're gonna be missing points on unless you just completely uh, don't read the directions and write up something that's totally unrelated to the assignment. Um, it's pretty much just a, 
a pass each week with that 10%. And then in um, session eight, um, you're asked to write about your organization's strategic goals. And so you know if you study the balanced scorecard that it is relating these goals to the company's strategy. So here's where you're gonna tell me about your organization's uh, strategic goals, um, your business model, and your um, current state. And then details should also be provided that link these organization's strategic goals and objectives to the area that you work in. So I wanna know where it is that you work exactly uh, and how that relates. And as far as length on this, I mean a half a page to one page should be sufficient. You don't, I mean, if you need to have more, need to write more about it, um, that's okay. I never take off for going too, too long, um, but you do wanna have a little bit in this area because we need to understand how that strategy is going to relate to your, the scorecard part of the project. In week nine, by then, uh, hopefully you've watched uh, some of these, um, done some reading on the balanced scorecard, and that's been the assigned reading, um, I believe in session eight. And so you're actually gonna be starting to design the scorecard part of the project. So I ask in session nine that you uh, identify the measures for two perspectives for your balanced scorecard, for two of the perspectives. Not all four of them, just start with two. You can pick whichever two that you want, maybe the ones that you feel most comfortable with and can think of something right away. And for these two, I know we said um, that there were seven parts, but for the, in session nine, all you're required to turn in is the objective or goal within the perspective, the measure, and the target. And there's a, there's a reason behind that, because if you can get those three critical elements right, then you're well on your way to having a good um, measure for that particular perspective. If you go ahead and you rush and you do all seven parts and the measure itself, we start with the first part and it really wasn't a good measure, then you've really wasted your time. And so this is really the design phase and the design phase of the project really to me is the time consuming part. That's where you're gonna sit down and brainstorm and say, okay, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do here? There's really no cookie cutter answer because again, it's based on your individual job. So it's allowing you to be creative. And yes, you can be creative in an accounting class. <clears throat> so once you've gone through session nine and you've identified those two perspectives, you will be getting some feedback as to whether that was, you know, that was fit the requirements or you should be getting some feedback. So when you get to session 10, you're going to be looking at the other two perspectives. Now I always have somebody that, that wants to do it all at once. Maybe they work ahead, that's fine. You can do any of these particular pieces early if you like. I've had people that have been finished with their whole scorecard by session 10. I can tell you that's not the norm. There's been um, another percentage that's been finished by session 11. Um, and, that, and that's fine if you wanna finish it early. Cause you will have everything that you need and we will continue to work on this each week. But if you need all, all, all the weeks, all the way up till the end, that's fine too. Just make sure you continue to turn in something each week. Because if you continue to do that, I promise you, you'll be in good shape when you come to the end. You won't be sitting there with a blank sheet of paper. In session 11, any modifications uh, that, that have been suggested in, uh, with your earlier feedback from your professor, this is your chance to send those modifications in. And occasionally I have someone who, who hasn't turned in modifications and there's no way that you've gotten this far in the project without having some sort of feedback. Uh, some, there's been something out there that needed to be fixed. Uh, that, I found that's just impossible. So um, if you think that there has been no modifications suggested, you should at least send out something and say, I don't think there was any modifications. Because there actually is 10% of the project riding on making those modifications. And in week 12, and I don't have that up here, that's when the entire project is due, um, all the pieces and parts. The balance scorecard itself is um, about um, half of the assignment, approximately half of the assignment. But your, um, your handout will, will describe uh, more of the pieces and parts that need to be in the final project, such as the executive summary, um, any implementation issues, uh, your conclusions and recommendations, and then uh, your reference page and cover page. Um, it also stipulates that you do this uh, 
Southern Westland is asking that you do it in SP, APA style. And there are some written report guidelines. And if you have any questions about that, um, a great place if you want to research APA style or MLA style, either one of those, is um, the OWL at Purdue. I don't know if you are familiar with that or you're welcome to ask me a question if you have any. And the, I believe that will conclude this session on the weekly assignments. Very important. These all add up to 50% of your grade on the project.